My name is Ronald Wimberly. I'm a cartoonist. I think that's it. <laughs> I do a lot of things. Yeah. Some books people might know are uh, most recently Black History in Its Own Words. Uh, I did Prince of Cats, both of those for Image Comics. Um, I've done a few fill-ins for Marvel and DC. Prince of Cats, it's Tybalt. It's a story of Tybalt from Romeo and Juliet. I use the basic structure of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, except I focus in on some of the characters' life outside of that narrative. It's set in a sort of mid 80s, mid to late 80s New York, taking a bit of a note from the Warriors. So kind of like a alternate universe New York where dueling is part of the culture, that street culture that led to the hip hop and the downtown culture of the late 70s, early 80s. Certain motivations dovetailed when I did Prince of Cats and Tybalt being the main character was one of them. In Romeo and Juliet, Romeo murders Tybalt. Juliet barely even sheds a tear, right? Like, you, you don't, you know what I mean? You get a little bit, but it's like, wow, yo, that was your cousin. You just got murked. Like, yo, this guy killed your cousin. And I think that's interesting because I could totally see something like that happening with kids, but at the same time, the lens doesn't really appreciate sort of like, wow, okay, that guy's gone now. They're gone. And I wanted to get more into the price of violence for all involved. I chose Shakespeare because, I mean, first of all, I grew up, I had read a lot of the plays. You know, like one of the things that in high school, when I first started to take like uh, lit, lit courses, I took some AP courses and we went through all the plays. Um, at the time, I thought Romeo and Juliet was kind of corny, you know? I thought, well, kids don't do that, right? Then as I got older, I was like, Kids certainly do really dumb things. They kill each other, they kill themselves for really, you know, dumb reasons that maybe that's not fair for me to say, but like as an adult, it seems like, wow, too many kids die for no reason at all. And that got me thinking at a certain point, and it got me thinking about like um, some of the things that happen around me in my environment or around my family's environment while I was growing up and when I was growing up. I grew up in the 80s in Washington, D.C. It was in New York, but it was palpable. Like, violence was everywhere, you know? And that was the language. Sometimes it was real. Sometimes that was the language of, like, you know, the media and government, you know, but it was everywhere, and the idea of violence was everywhere. So there's a scene in Prince of Cats where the, um, where Tybalt gets a pair of shoes from, uh, Petruchio, well, his mother gives him a pair, like, Petruchio's shoes. And, like, that happened to me, you know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I, I got a pair of shoes from somebody who had been murdered. Like, actually, you know, a cousin, like, my stepfather's side. Uh, I never wore those shoes. And I remember, like, that, that was something from the time period that always stuck with me. It was like, yo, yeah, it was just weird. You know, so it's like those types of experiences inform Prince of Cats. Black History in Its Own Words started out as a project for the NIB. They asked me to do something for them. They wanted me to illustrate black history figures, some contemporary, some, you know, historical. They wanted me to pick quotes and illustrate the figures. It's a celebration of these figures and giving them voice in their own words. Like it's literally in the title. I really leaned into the Emory Douglas in my work. Emory Douglas, the Minister of Information, I think, for the Black Panthers, like, he was like the art director for the Black Panther uh, newspaper. He's influenced my work going way back. So what I did was, is I leaned into that aesthetic when I worked on this project, uh, more so than I had in, say, had prior, even though he definitely influenced the way I think about the use of blacks, the use of line, um, sort of the uh, aesthetic language of printmaking. I felt great about some figures. It was like, wow, okay, I've never seen an illustration of a few of these people, um, or maybe very few. And it felt really good to draw these people that were kind of like legends to me. One of the central problems I wanted to solve was 
I don't want there to have to be a uh, black queer history in its own words or a black women's history in its own words. And embedded in me in that problem is the reason for having a black history in its own words. The fact that uh, unfortunately certain groups have had their history omitted from the historic record when we tell history, when we tell the story of our you know, society and our world. When <laughs> every once in a while like some one of these holidays, bootleg holidays will come up, you know what I mean? Like Black History Month or like, you know, Women's History Month or like, uh, I think Hispanic something, Hispanic Heritage Month. And I was like, wow, you know, yeah, I could have done any one of those. Fortunately for me, uh, in Black History Month, there's like, you know, there are queer people, there are women, there are uh, Latin Americans in Black History in its own words. So I, if I had the time, I could have done, that book could have been like, 600 pages long, you know what I mean? And I mean, that's one of the powerful things about it is like, somebody was like, well, you know, I wanna do, maybe I, you know, like I wanted to do something like this, but I didn't do it. I was like, yo, do it. Like, we could do, all of us could do these books <laughs> every year, you know what I mean? And we could keep going. And that's what was great about it, where it's like, wow, okay. There really has been a uh, disparity <laughs> in, in uh, when it comes to, showing this sort of thing. So right now I'm working on Lab Magazine, which is a newspaper. It's a large format, broadsheet comics newspaper. It's essentially, it's, a, it's comics and criticism. I'm inspired by the old interview magazine, you know, having an artist talk to another artist. So the first issue is, I'm calling it number zero, is uh, about identity, speculative identity, uh, particularly my identity as a black man, like not to mince words, but like, you know, there's a racial paradigm here and everything is viewed through that paradigm where you might make a work. Like, so if I make Prince of Cats, I'm like, yo, look, it's this dope thing about this, that, and the third. And then when someone maybe does like an article on it, it's like, oh, it's like uh, black characters doing this, that, and the third. It's a hip hop uh, retelling of Shakespeare and it's like, not really be like, that is your racial <laughs> lens on the work, right? I can't escape it, you know what I mean? Like that's the world, that's the paradigm that the work exists in. Not only is that the case, but the racial paradigm has created a commodity out of like the racial aspect of it. You know what I mean? Like what is the value of it? So in this newspaper, I'm going to talk about that. I wanna showcase with Lab the intellectual aspect of comics. People talk about in comics, this dichotomy of writer and artist, which seems like sort of uh, stratified in a way where it's like, okay, the writer is like the intellectual component and the artist is like sort of the labor component. So I wanna smash that shit because like, you know, artists are intellectuals. What I aspire to be, like the, the attitude that I aspire to have, and you know, as much as possible, even though I may forget sometimes, is one of, well, these, this is the, this is what it can be. You know, like if I'm going to, my criticism is a generative act. You know what I mean? Like I'm creating, that's how I'm criticizing. And that's what lab is, right? I'm gonna create something. That's what I do, you know? And if I have to destroy, I'm gonna destroy with create creativity. You know what I mean? Thank you for watching Beyond the Long Box. If you enjoy the show or would like to see more, please hit subscribe and we'll continue to bring you the best in comics. Worship me!